Hello everyone and welcome back to Strife Solutions here on the Yogscast server. I am of course William Strife and this, my friends, is Yogscast Complete, or Yog Pack, a uh, special package of modded Minecraft that uh, we have specifically had put together for us, the Yogscast. Anyways, um, today, guys, a uh, big project today, not really a checklist once again. Um, there's a lot of stuff to get done and specifically it's going to be a build project this time around. I've been going through the trouble of collecting together a lot, lots of resources. I have uh, gotten my hands on a bunch of mud bricks from uh, the swamp out to the uh, east of my base. I've been uh, taking mud out of the swamp. And also I've got myself a bunch of bricks and uh, basalt bricks and whatnot, concrete and the like. And uh, also over here, I've made myself up a whole bunch of thickened glass, as you can see, which is uh, sandy glass, smelted sandy glass is just glass combined with sand. So, the reason why I've got all of this together is because uh, I really, really want to get this facility up and running. And filling out the extra levels on this... Woo, woo, talk about glitching out. Uh, I really want to get the upper levels of this facility functioning, but before I can hope to do that, I'm gonna have to get all of um, my resources in order. And in order to get the last of my resources together, um, I need ender pearls. Uh, amongst other things, which are not easy to get come about, but I need to, uh, in, in order to get those, I need to go about uh, growing them through the Magical Crops mod. But naturally, the Magical Crops mod, well, that's a, that's a tiered system, it's going to be something dedicated, there's a lot of stuff you can get your hands on by utilizing it, so I'm going to use this platform out here that I built, uh, should have shown it in the last episode. Uh, with this platform finally built, I can go about setting up a large uh, farming facility, a place where I can cultivate crops uh, in a controlled area and uh, auto-harvest them and whatnot as I need. Uh, I'll finish filling up that platform later on, and there are other things that are going, on, going to go on to this platform, because this is basically going to be the uh, agricultural section of the Solution Business Park. So uh, I am going to switch over to the build cam, and you guys can see me working on the greenhouse. So, let's get started. Right off, what I knew I had to do was measure out the area that this greenhouse had to uh, stand on because I had very specific plans for the size, the dimensions of the facility, and I continuously got my torches wrong here. As you can see, I keep uh, taking them down and replacing them right there. Uh, what I did right off from the start was make certain to measure out the area properly with those torches and figure out where my corners were. Once that was done, I started using the excavator to dig the cross section here, which uh, would eventually be filled in with uh, mud bricks. And uh, utilizing my builder's wand, I filled in the pathways around the edges of the farm. And it also helped me to finish up the cross section very, very quickly as well. Then I utilized cobblestone to place Marked the locations where support starts would go in, and I filled in the gaps between with some nice uh, smooth stone. I then utilized basalt brick to build up the support struts that uh, would separate the glass walls. Ultimately, the basalt, uh, I ended up replacing it, but it looked like the right thing to do at the time. Then, taking all of that thickened glass that I made, I filled in between the support struts, finished up the doorway there, and uh, use the Builder's law Wand to quickly fill in the walls. I really like the way that uh, Thickened Glass looks because it is, it's connected texture by default. With the walls finished, I came around and used, utilizing tons of Carpenter's Wedge Blocks, I filled in the edges leading up to the roof. And with the carpenter's blocks placed, I came across the top utilizing my jetpack, and I created this cross structure that would uh, help to hold the building up. And then I went around the edges and filled in the carpenter's blocks to make it look like it all connected. And then, unfortunately, thickened glass will not apply to the carpenter's blocks, so I was forced to use standard glass blocks from Vanilla Minecraft to fill in uh, the carpenter's blocks around the edges. With that done, I uh, filled in a bit of a circle in the middle, and utilizing more thickened glass, I uh, filled in the rest of the roof to let lots of sunlight in for all of those crops, which they do indeed need. And with that done, I was pretty much finished with the entire facility. I just lit it up with uh, torches, and uh, the job was finished. 
Uh, okay everyone, so it's been a little bit since I finished the build. Uh, I've, uh, managed to get another recorded session in with Parvis. Uh, but in that time that since I finished the build, I, uh, I looked at it and I said, geez, you know, wow, it looks way too bland. It's too black. There's too much black all over this platform. So I came back and I went and I adjusted it a little bit. I put some flowers out front as well. Uh, gave it some glass doors with the, uh, Carpenter's Block mod. And, uh, I gave it these nether blocks to uh, give it a little bit more character since the uh, the nether brick red or maroon color is really uh, what Strife Solutions is known about. And this is from the Railcraft mod, if I just hit uh, comma here. You can see that it's made by just resmelting nether brick and this stuff can then be used to craft all sorts of things, ornate nether stone, stairs, uh, more slabs, uh, I can turn it into fitted stone and whatnot. So there's a lot of stuff that you can make it into. Uh, I really like the way that it looks. Uh, it's it's a nice alternative to just the uh, the standard busy brick uh, design. So this, my friends, is the uh, the farm facility, looking pretty good. Um, and like I said, I have uh, since also done some work with Parvis. Uh, this is probably a good opportunity for me to plug uh, blood magic with Parvis. Uh, I don't really know that he's actually getting anywhere. I mean, let's face it, it's he's Parvis. Um, He's probably not, he's probably just, you know, fooling himself into imagining that he's actually a great and powerful wizard. Um, so I, I, I pop over there every once in a while to uh, hang out, you know, kind of relax because, I mean, it's a lot of work building a company over here. But uh, while I was hanging out with him recently, I picked up this thing, which is a Staff of Traveling. Um, kind of high tier, found it in a dungeon, but if I hold down shift, it takes me straight through walls and I can charge it right back up with uh, any of my... Uh, with the charge pad that I have inside, I could even put this inside of a uh, energy cube to uh, recharge it if I wanted to. So, a uh, great way to travel around really fast, and uh, like I said, takes me straight through walls, so this is going to help me out a whole lot. Uh, it's relatively expensive to create, and uh, I would have made one eventually had I not found one, so uh, there you go. Look it up and uh, figure out how to build it yourself if you're really interested and you're following along. But, um... With the farm facility finished, I have gone about uh, digging a whole bunch of trenches and putting in these uh, mine factory blocks. Uh, the planters and the harvesters, if you don't know how to how these things work or what their purposes are, first of all, uh, listen to their name. And uh, second of all, look at a previous episode much, much earlier before I got the tower up where I basically explained the functionality of the harvester and the planter. So uh, the problem that I have is that the, uh, the harvester generates sludge and... Um, I've got to have a place for uh, the items that it spits out, because if you look at the back, it's got a hole on it. It spits out everything that it harvests right out the back. And I've, g I've basically got to get a system together where um, the items that the harvester gathers will be sent back to a central processing system so it can sort through all of the seeds and the items that it gets and send the seeds back to the planters down here to uh, replant the farm fields and, um, you know, also uh, have a place where I can uh, keep useful crops such as the essence dusts because um what my main concern here is uh re-establishing the magic farm which i don't know that i will actually get to in this episode because uh i'm kind of running out of time but uh here's the deal uh, i want to use mine factory reloaded to use to do the item transport so what this thing is going to do is it's going to you know harvest up everything in front of it and then it's going to spit it out right out the back and while tubes would do fine you know uh pneumatic tubes or uh uh, logistical transporters, I believe they are, from uh, the Mechanism mod. Not bad. Pretty good. Uh, but I'd like to use something different. There's nothing wrong with having some variation. So what I've decided to do is use these conveyor belts from Mine Factory Reloaded. These are made with uh, rubber bars, some iron, and redstone. You get 16 of them, so pretty cheap. And uh, you get iron just by smelting rubber that drops from rubber trees. And um, you can re-smelt the rubber to get raw plastic if you need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these conveyor belts down, and as you can see, once I've put them down, if I just chuck a couple of items onto it, they just carry them right along. So, uh, pretty cool, you know? So I'm just going to lay a whole bunch of these down, and then... Here we go. Lay them along like so. And everything is going to travel... All of the items are going to travel along this first, uh, this bottom layer of the trenches. Back to right here. There we go. Now, here's a problem. Um, conveyor belts will not insert things directly into a chest. And I've got a diamond chest here, which is where everything is going to go. So, 
just pop that down. Um, the problem is that uh, items will not just flow straight down a conveyor belt and go straight into the chest. They're just going to sit there right on the edge of the chest. So what I have to do is I have to make an extra item called an item collector. And the item collector is composed of plastic sheets, a chest, and a machine frame. And the machine frame is just this, which uh, I have already made. And uh, I should have a crafting table just outside, so I'll go ahead and make that real fast. And as you can see, you get eight of these item collectors for that one single crafting recipe, which is more than fair, I, I, I would believe. Um, so what's going to happen is um, I'm going to go ahead and pop this baby down right there. And um, I can go ahead and put down some belts. I'll go ahead and finish uh, putting belts down uh, along everything else. What I have next to do is to take this uh, extra logistical sorter that I have, uh, which I use to build the uh, sorting facility underneath my base, which actually is giving me quite a bit of problem. It's it's causing server lag. There's a good chance that I might have to uh, rip out the old uh, sorting system and that I just built a couple of episodes ago and uh, replace it with something more effective. <laughs> Wonders how that uh, works out. Anyways, um, with this logistical sorter down, I can go ahead and sort everything out of this chest and send it along pipes back to the uh, back to the harvesters or uh, back to the planters, which are uh, located, uh, you know, in various locations over there, here, here, and there. Uh, I'm not entirely certain how I'm going to get that piping network set up, but what I have more concern with is the fact that I'm going to have to route power. Uh, into both the planters and the harvesters. So I have a contingency plan for this and uh, I've also got these mechanical pipes here for sludge. So first off, I need to get sludge out of these babies. So I'm just going to connect some pipes this way and uh, connect over like so. Put a lot of thought into how this is going to go together. Go ahead and uh, connect pipes there, there. And here we go. I've built a multi-block tank just over here with uh, lots of volume in it, and this is where the sludge is going to get stored. Okay, so uh, here we go. You can see that I've uh, set up the uh, piping to get the sludge out of the harvesters and into the large multi-block tank on the other side there, and I've also hooked up a bunch of these uh, elite universal cables. They're not the most powerful of the cables, but at the same time, these uh, harvesters don't require excess amounts of power, so... I've gone ahead and uh, I've hooked everything up. And as you can see, um, this uh, cable is going to ride just one block above the conveyor system. So I can go ahead and just come back through here and uh, continue laying the cable down right over the top. Okay, so uh, there we go. I've got the cabling running back to this chamber right here, which is exactly which is exactly what I want, but I don't actually know how the cables are going to come out of this chamber because what I'm aiming to do is not to only grow very valuable crops, but also to make this entire facility self-sufficient. What I'm going to need to do is uh, finish laying the uh, conveyor belts down for the other side, as well as uh, item pipes, and there's a skeleton outside, and, um, you know, pipes to get the sludge out and over to this uh, large multi-block tank that I built. Um, but, uh, you know, that's something that I can do off camera. Uh, I've given you guys basically a really quick rundown of the guts underneath. I'll also have to figure out how exactly I'm going to uh, get the sorting pipes sending items and seeds back to the, uh, the planter. But until next time, guys, I am, of course, William Strife of Strife Solutions, and uh, things are continuing to look up. Next time around, I'll actually get around to uh, finishing power for the system, and also, I have a bit of a problem with not having enough fertilized dirt for this farm facility, which, if you remember, is a fantastic type of dirt which things grow four times faster on, which is definitely going to come in handy. I have a way, or a workaround, of being able to make more fertilized dirt faster. But until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. Bye!